Hi, I'm Dan Veal, and as usual, you are tuned into Bass Gear Magazine. And in this review, we don't have just one, but we have two P style basses to check out in collaboration with top session bassist Marcus Miller. Sire have brought out two absolutely awesome P-style basses to add to their already best-selling range. Let's have a listen to this one and then we'll get into the details. Straight out of the box, these two basses that I have in for video review for you today are an absolute joy to play. So much so that I'm not really looking forward to having to box them up and send them back to Andertons who very, very kindly have sent the instruments over on loan for me to review. In my previous video, we looked at the V7 Vintage and the V524 fret model. These are J-style basses, and in this review we have two P-style. This one on my lap is the P5R. Up at the headstock end of business then, my camera has pushed me into soft focus so we can get the headstock design into focus. We have four vintage style open gear tuning keys, and you can immediately see this absolutely wonderful rich color as we have a roasted maple neck. And if you look really closely, and I'm trying to make it out with this angle, there is actually some flaming in this particular example, which looks absolutely stunning. Flipping the base back over, and like the V models that I reviewed, I particularly like that the P models also have a string retainer which holds down the A, D and G strings unlike some P style models that only hold down the D and the G. This is going to improve the break angle for the A string as well over the nut which should help reduce any vibrations and buzzes but also hopefully improve tone as well. Coming over the nut, this is a bone nut and in true P style uh, tradition, we have a 42 millimeter nut. Coming down the fretboard then on this particular model, looking down the fretboard, and I'll do a close up in just a moment, we have dot markers in all the usual positions. And the 20 frets on board this base have been absolutely beautifully finished. No sharp edges whatsoever. One of the big selling points for me for sire basses is the comfort when playing. And on sire basses, all of the version two and up models, they have an edgeless fretboard. This is a rounded edge which feels less square and almost lived in, very, very comfortable around both my fingers and the top half of my hand if I'm playing thumb over the fretboard. Super, super comfy, and I've really enjoyed playing these basses with any, uh, without any undue discomfort whatsoever. As I roll the bass backwards and forwards gently, have a look at the edge of the fretboard. And also, the flaming on this particular instrument comes all the way down the back of the neck as well. This looks really, really good. So switching around to my second camera here, round the back we have a wonderful vintage white finish. The P5R currently comes in three color choices. The natural, so you can see the wood grain of the older body, which I think looks absolutely beautiful. And a good old sunburst model as well for those really cool vintage vibes. 
The finish on here is absolutely brilliant. I can't find any blemishes. Really nice straight out of the box. Hiding around the back of the base, we've got some really interesting appointments on board. Given the amount of clone P-style bases that are on the market, it's these little details that are gonna have me reaching for a sire base over some of the many copies. So, what have we got going on? You can see around the back here, we have string through body mounting. So you can actually run the strings through the body or through the back of the tailpiece on the bridge that we'll have a close look in just a moment. Not all bases have this, and it's a, a nice little detail to have here, depending on what your preference is, if you prefer to run the strings through the body or through the back of the bridge. We have our usual chest cutaway here, which I think is pretty much needed, isn't it, these days for comfort? And then coming up on what proves to be a fairly lightweight body, Although you can't see it at this angle, where the neck and body joins at the heel, there is actually a very gentle carve a slope away. I'm going to see if I can move my base here into a slightly different angle and hopefully you'll be able to see that. And back around the front of the base, the attention to detail continues. Down at the bottom of the fretboard here, Unlike the good old classic P bases, there is a cutaway for your truss rod adjustment. So there's no need to take the neck off. There's no need to take the pit guard off. We have a beautiful well-cut slot here, which is color matched with the body. And you get some tools in the box as well to get in there and make any small adjustments you might need. However, I have to say this, straight out of the box, this has got to be one of the best setup necks that I've played at this price point for years. It really does match the kind of playing style that I have. Whether you prefer a slightly higher action or a slightly lower action, knowing when a bass comes out of the box with a reasonably low action to begin with, you know that the neck isn't hiding any dodgy high frets. This is a really big positive plus for me. So I'm really pleased that Sire's QC, before the instruments go into boxes to be shipped out, is actually looking at these kind of details. Switching back to my close cam once again, and we can see that we've got the strings mounted through the back of the bridge here. Interestingly, and I'm very, very pleased to see this as well, D'Addario strings on board. My favorite brand of strings, and this bass sounds great because of it. We have steel spiral style saddles for that vintage vibe. And you know what? As much as I like a really chunky bridge, this certainly fits the vibe of the instrument, and I think it looks really, really tidy. Another small detail. The grub screws, which are adjusting the action for the saddles, are actually sat in slots. So sometimes these steel base plates for other bases are just a plain plate, and the saddle can actually move left and right. Again, another small detail, which I think is really worth paying attention to. And on board the P5, we have a tortoiseshell three-ply pit guard. Uh, another thumbs up here, because there's certain um, tortoiseshell guards that just look a bit sickly. And this one, I would say it's pretty tasteful, looks really cool against this vintage white. Moving down onto the electronics, I'm going to get to the, some of the sounds on board the P5R. Sire designed these pickups are the Marcus Vintage Fat Precision Revolution set. A bit of a mouthful there, but although they are maybe a slightly lower output vintage style pickup in comparison to, say, um, some active models on the market, that does not mean that they're not full of tone. 
turn up the gain control on your amplifier and these things sing. Plenty of brightness and clarity, lots of mid-range that you expect from a P-style bass and that all wonderful depth that when you put this through a big bass stack it sounds absolutely warm and wonderful. Here we go, let's listen to some tones. sound example I had the volume all the way open the tone control all the way open and I dug in a little bit to get a bit of grit from the sound of the bass let's pull the tone control back a little bit and have a softer sound again finger style Let's get aggressive, I'm going to add a bit of drive to the sound and play with a plectrum. The Sire P5R is also capable of some thick grungy sounds as well and we know plenty of bands that like to drop tune. I've dumped the P5R down into detuning and it's time to slap it. And how seamlessly we move into the Sire P5 model. The P5 has a lot in common with the P5R, so this second segment of my review will seem a little shorter as we go over much of the same details, but I'm gonna point out the differences on the way. It's soft focus once again, and up at the headstock we have the same style tuning keys, and also the string retainer holding down the A, D, and G strings. And as I mentioned before with the P5R model, we come down to a bow nut, and this is a 42 millimeter width. Subtle changes to the P5 versus the P5R model, and not only do we have a maple fretboard here, but you'll also see it is a glossy finish. However, on the back of the neck, we have a satin finish. I'm going to flip the base over and we'll have a closer look at that. Round the side of the edgeless fretboard, like the P5R, we have white dot markers, so we can see where we are on a darkened stage. But for a more stealthy look round the front, we have black dot markers on the maple fretboard. This may or may not be your thing. I think it looks kind of stylish, and I don't really spend a great deal of time looking at the front of the fretboard anyway. So from a uh, stylish sort of look, I think it's cool, but maybe if you need to see where you are on that stage or when you are performing, then maybe the P5R could be more to your liking. Like the P5R, we have through body string mounting and round when we see the bridge in just a moment, you'll see that the strings are mounted through the back of the tail of the bridge. Much like the P5R, we also have um, a standard neck joint here for the heel and a slight angle coming down towards the neck. Flipping back to my close cam, once again, we can see that we have the Marcus Vintage Fat Precision Revolution set on board like the P5R. Again, a split coil P-style 
pickup, which has all of the wonderful richness and depth that we would hope for from a P style bass. Again, this is all passive, master volume and master tone. And in just a moment, I'm gonna play some sounds where I vary playing styles and also the tone control in order to create some different rich tones from the bass. Digging in there with some finger style there, the bass had a nice clank to it. Now I've reached for the plectrum to hear some of the overtones and some of the richness that this all maple neck can bring us. Wrapping up this review then for the Sire P5 models today. The model I have on my lap at the moment is not only available in this glorious red color, but also in mild green. There is also a tobacco sunburst model, which is so eye-catching against the roasted maple neck. That is definitely my favorite combination for probably the entire Sire range at the moment. As always, I hope that you've enjoyed hearing and seeing these bases in action. When it comes to value for money with the extra additional details on these bases, I don't think you can really go wrong. They are a great basis for a great sounding instrument straight out of the box, plays beautifully, and I could easily pick up one of these and take it straight to a gig with minimal adjustment, if anything. Please do head over to the written review in Bass Gear magazine. Um, there's going to be some more details about the instruments in there as well. And if you haven't already checked out the V model reviews that I've also just done, then please head on over and look at those and check out the video. For now, thank you ever so much for checking out this review. I will be back soon with a whole host of really cool new goodies to show and demonstrate to you. Um, and I'm really looking forward to putting those together. But for now, I've been Dan Veal and you have been watching Bass Gear Magazine. <laughs>